Wiggly's back again. Just look at this little psychopath. Man, Wiggly Tough decks are so much fun to build. It was brought to my attention by Loving a Pipe that I had never really done a video for Wave Maker, which was just Wiggly Tough paired with one or more Haymaker cards. And at first I thought that it didn't need its own video because you could just take your basic Wiggly Tough build and add in more basic Pokemon. But the more I thought about it, the more I realized that there actually is a pretty heavy distinction between your basic do the wave deck and your wave maker builds, which are more of a potpourri deck. I've also had a couple of people ask for more clarification on what I mean by potpourri decks. These are basically decks that take multiple types of Pokemon and try to hit as many weaknesses as possible across metagame decks, often utilizing three or four energy types and including very niche utility Pokemon like a Lickitung or a Kangaskhan. And to show how relevant these potpourri type big basic cards were, you just have to look at the deck data for every era of the TCG that Wigglytuff was a part of. For the base to fossil format, Do the Wave made up about 17% of the decks that saw tournament play. But of those took three first places at official events and a second place. Utilizing different combinations of Hitmonchan, Scyther, Electabuzz, Ditto, and Clefable. By the time the Team Rocket set was released, Wavemaker had made its way all the way up to 42% of decks in organized play, heavily outpacing every other big deck in the metagame. Base Rocket only had a couple of official events, but just look how much Wavemaker dominated the top eight at these events. If you look at the breakdowns of each of these decks, you're going to see so many potpourri cards mixed in there. Not only Hitmonchan, Electabuzz, and Ditto, but also Scyther, Magmar, Mr. Mime, Promo Mewtwo, Dodrio. All kinds of these potpourri cards meant to give that specific deck an advantage over other Wavemaker decks. The domination continued well into the Gym Heroes and Gym Challenge sets, as you see here with Prop 15, 50% of decks became Wavemaker builds. You could not escape Big Wiggly. Prop 15 only had one official event, but as you may have suspected, Wigglytuff dominated it, with the new potpourri additions being Erica's Dratini and Rocket Zapdos. There was also quite a bit of Chansey, Mr. Mime, and Brock's Rhyhorn mixed in there. So hopefully that brief history lesson informs why Wavemaker deserves its own dedicated video since it did dominate every single format all the way from Jungle up to Rocket On. So let's just look at a sample deck build for a Wavemaker potpourri type deck and then get into some alternate options and why some may be better than others. The general strategy of your Wigglytuff deck or Do The Wave deck is to fill up your bench as quickly as possible, evolve into Wigglytuff as quickly as possible, throw a double colorless on there so you can start attacking on turn two, and doing Do The Wave for maximum damage. In the classic Wigglytuff build that I have in a separate video on the channel, you fill up your bench with Clefairy Doll and Mysterious Fossil. That way, if those Pokemon get gusted out and knocked out, you're not losing any prize cards. And every now and then you would mix in cards like Lickitung or Chansey that had high enough HP that they're not going to get O-code by anything. So you don't have to worry about them being gusted out. And they're more permanent Pokemon that could fill up that bench space. One other way to look at it would be, well, if I'm going to have to fill up my bench with a lot of different Pokemon, why not make them useful attackers like Haymaker does? And that's pretty much the entire concept behind Wavemaker. You're going to fill up your bench with all kinds of big basic Pokemon that can do some pretty good damage or have secondary effects for only one energy each. So I thought if I was going to do a Wavemaker build, this would also be an opportunity to show off some potpourri type deck building. And so I'm running a 2-2 line of Wigglytuff with two copies of Scyther, Hitmonchan, Electabuzz, and Magmar which I think are the four best Haymaker cards for the base to fossil format. I think that comboing Scyther with Switch is more deck efficient than running Dodrio. Hitmonchan is going to help you hit weakness for other Wigglytuffs, Clefable, Lickitung, Chansey, lots of other normal types that are weak to fighting. Electabuzz, probably the best 
single energy attacker in the game. We'll also help you hit Squirtles and Blast Toys for weakness. And then Magmar, I think in general, is just a wonderful attacker with smokescreen that can kind of stall your opponent in the same way that a Cleffa would later on. Energy Search is essential for this deck because you're running multiple types of energy. There's four types of energy in this deck. You want to be able to get the specific one you need when you need it. Since you may not be able to get it in your opening hand even after playing an Oak or a Bill. Plus Power is in here just to build up on that Haymaker style gameplay that you're going to be looking for. Whatever your opponent's playing, that's going to determine what Pokemon you're going to lead with and probably play the entire game around. So getting those set up on your bench alongside any Wigglytuffs is going to be very important. Gust of Wind is in here for the same reason. It's really should be called Gust of Wind because that's where most of your knockouts are going to be coming from. You're going to be pulling off those smaller basics from your opponent's bench and attacking them or Pokemon that have previously been retreated because they have too many damage counters on them. Because this is Potpourri and it's a more diversified approach to Wigglytuff, you're not really going to have room to use those super energy removals or the super potions in this deck to heal up your basics. Instead, your focus is going to be on attacking for weakness early on in the game and then swapping into Wigglytuff mid or late game in order to deal that massive do the wave damage and potentially start knocking out your opponent's big basics with do the wave. So if you see your opponent starting out with a hit, Monchan, that's when you're going to want to use computer search to try to search out a Scyther to make your active. That way that resistance can really kick in and they're going to have to swap their Hitmonchan, at which point you can swap out Scyther. If you see your opponent starting with a Scyther, then you may want to search out a Magmar and try to hit that Scyther for weakness. I do include a couple of grass energy in this deck in case you do want to attack with Scyther. It's really easy to do, especially with that double colorless included. Swords Dance Slash can be really threatening to your opponent. So if you maybe want to force them to switch, you can use Swords Dance as a tactic just to get them to swap. Or you can go ahead and deal that 60 damage next turn. The energy distribution in this deck is based on how much I used each of these big basics to attack with, as well as how much energy their secondary attacks cost. So even if I didn't use Hitmonchan as much, it does need another Fighting Energy to use Special Punch if I wanted to. So that's why I'm including five copies of Fighting Energy as opposed to the four copies of Lightning Energy for Electabuzz, even though I use Electabuzz much more often than I do Hitmonchan. Same thing with Magmar, where I do use Magmar quite often, but Smog only requires two Fire Energy to use. So I really only need four copies of Fire Energy in this deck. And then a couple of Grass Energy for if I ever want to use Scyther. So when you start the game and you kind of see what your opponent's playing, you can rule out pretty fast like, oh, well, I definitely won't be attacking with Magmar this game since it's about Rain Dance. So instead, I can put those Fire Energy onto Wigglytuff since I'm not going to be using them. So in that way, you can actually shift your deck to fit whatever you're playing against. So hopefully you understand why I chose these specific Potpourri Partners for this build of Wavemaker, but like I said, you do have a lot of other options, one of which is actually including Dodrio. Because it's going to reduce the retreat cost of most of your big basics down to just one energy instead of two, which makes a huge difference because you're usually only going to be attaching one energy to each anyway to use its one energy attack. If you're looking to sponge more attacks while also dealing some incremental damage, then Lickitung is your go-to. Tongue Wrap can actually be really helpful in stalling out your opponent for a couple of turns while setting up Wigglytuff on your bench, while at the same time stacking tiny little bits of damage. Muck can be really helpful in shutting down troublesome cards like Aerodactyl, Mr. Mime, and Blastoise, but at this point in time, the format was so dominated by Haymaker and Wavemaker builds that Muck really didn't serve any purpose because there weren't enough powers floating around to shut down. The most popular Wavemaker card that I didn't include in this build was Promo Mewtwo. Because it could get set up so quickly, energy absorption doesn't specify that you have to get any certain type of energy back, so you could grab one Psychic and one of any other kind of energy to use Cyburn. And this was such a popular addition because Cyburn is going to allow you to Oko any opposing Hitmonchans. Mr. Mime was a little less popular as a Psychic-type attacker, even though it had a great Pokemon power, 
It was more of a late game Pokemon where you would deal 10 or 20 damage at a time with your Haymaker Pokemon, and then that's when you would pull out a Mr. Mime and utilize that stacked damage with Meditate to deal a much larger chunk of damage. In the style of Mr. Mime, moving into the gym sets, Sometimes people used Erica's Dratini to help stall your opponent a little bit with Strange Barrier. It really helped against other Haymaker builds because you're only going to be dealing 10 damage to it at a time. And you could still utilize those double colorless to get a Tail Strike off, which could potentially deal some good chunks of damage. Erica's Jigglypuff could also utilize double colorless in a very situational Haymaker way with Pulled Punch to where you could stick a solid 40 damage on any Pokemon that hasn't been attacked yet. If you were feeling lucky, you could include Brock's Rhyhorn, which can actually be pretty scary to play against if you think your opponent has any chance at hitting double heads. Ditto was a staple of Potpourri and Wavemaker decks because it could turn a double colorless energy into basically a double rainbow energy, which let it get off attacks much faster than whatever it was transforming into. Clefable was utilized in the same way as it could copy any attack on your opponent's opposing Pokemon, so if you're up against a Hitmonchan, you can actually pick Special Punch and use it for only one energy instead of three. This was especially useful in mirror matches as you could do the wave for only one energy and still deal the maximum amount of damage. I could go on and on listing the pros and cons of other various basic Pokemon that could fit into a Wave Maker deck, but I've gone over all of the really useful ones and you guys can use your own imagination. So let me know down in those comments what you would pair with Wigglytuff for your own potpourri or Wave Maker builds. Keep those request decks coming. Keep the discussion alive about these decks down in the comments. And until next video, keep it wiggly!